In this chapter, the authors explain in greater detail what they mean by the concept of organization introduced in chapter 1, and they explore the concept of organizational communication. They also discuss some of the most prevalent types of organizations as a starting point for understanding how the unique properties of an organization influence its, its communication. Further, they identify some of the most important features of an organization's structure and culture that impact the design and enactment of strategic communication. In Chapter 1, the formal concept of an organization was introduced as an identifiable social structure consisting of members united toward meeting internal and external goals. But what are they? There are four identifiable dimensions that organizations have in common. First, organizations comprise people who must interact with one another. Second, organizations are embedded within external environments that extend beyond their own boundaries. Third, organizations impact their internal and external environments. And fourth, organizations have a goal that binds their members together. Thus, an organization is a communicative social enterprise with shared goals that are interdependently linked with its external environment. Communication facilitates organizational activities and outcomes, and it is considered a critical and necessary condition for effective organizational functioning. Organizational communication is the use of oral, written, and nonverbal messages among people working within an organization to accomplish shared goals. But not all communication within organization is aimed at goals and objectives. Communication that is focused on organizational objectives and advancing an organization's mission is referred to as strategic communication. Strategic communication is shaped, planned, designed, and executed in specific ways that are heavily influenced by organization's type, structure, and culture. For-profit organizations are designed for the primary with a primary purpose of generating a profit for the owner or owners of the entity. Examples include retail, hospitality, manufacturing, and technology. Many for-profit organizations are dedicated to corporate social responsibility or CSR, which involves policies and practices that enhance the company's impact on environmental and social well-being. Next, nonprofit organizations. The primary purpose of nonprofit organizations is to promote a particular cause, advocate a viewpoint, or advance a political, social, or philanthropic mission. These organizations are often interested in healthcare, education, environmental conservation, wildlife protection, and providing basic needs like food and water. They often rely heavily on the volunteer workforce. Examples include the UNICEF, Greenpeace, and Doctors Without Borders. Third, governmental organizations. A government is the means through which a community, state, or country is organized and regulated. Their primary purpose is to deliver goods and services that benefit their external stakeholders rather than generate profit. An example will be the Defense Logistics Agency. Government systems tend to be large and highly bureaucratic. Max Weber created a theory of bureaucratic organizations. According to Weber in 1947, the characteristics of bureaucra bureaucracies like government are bureaucracies require hierarchical structure with most communicating flown from the top down. The division of labor should be clear and tasks highly specialized. The organization should operate in a relatively closed fashion. Written rules are essential. 
A system of rules should address all possible contingencies or unexpected but possible deviations from standard operating procedures. Bureaucracies must be guided by strict authority. There are three types of bureaucratic authority. One, charismatic authority is based on a manager or leader's communication style, personality, and ability to relate on an interpersonal level to those around him or her. Two, traditional authority is based on an individual's title or position in the hierarchy. It may or may not be a reflection of his or her actual talents and abilities. And three, rational legal authority is the basis for management and leadership. It does not reside in the person or people, but rather in the rules, laws, norms, and policies that characterize the organization. Organizational structure refers to the overall pattern according to which work gets done and objectives are pursued and accomplished. Structure is the template or guide for how roles are assigned and work allocated and how power and control are distributed. Structural features of an organization include its size, degree of formality, and its configuration. There are different facets of organizational structure. Example, complexity, central, centralization, and formalization. With regard, to, with regard to complexity, it refers to a series of interrelated structural features that describe the tangible ways people and practices relate to one another within an organization. There are three aspects of complexity to consider. Horizontal differentiation refers to how individual roles are defined and work allocated across the organization. Size, it communicates or allows communication that is very different in larger organization and in smaller ones. Vertical hierarchy refers to how tall the organization's structure is. Centralization refers to the degree to which the power to make decisions and chart strategy is concentrated at higher levels within the organization. Formalization refers to the extent to which rules, processes, and procedures are explicitly stated in writing. The more formalized an organization is, the less freedom individual members have to make case-by-case -case decisions about the best way to act. Every organization has a unique culture that is created by the interactions its stakeholders have, and that has a substantial impact on subsequent communication. Some scholars have defined organizational culture as the set of artifacts, values, and assumptions that emerge from the interactions of organizational members. Culture develops in two ways. Organizational members produce culture through their communication and other actions. Culture is also determined by the leaders of the organization and taught to employees who are expected to adapt. The nature of an organization's culture helps distinguish it from other organizations, including its competitors. Culture reflects an organization's mission and vision and simultaneously influences the kinds of goals and objectives an organization pursues. There are eight features for analyzing organizational culture. First, values. Values are defined by the more or less shared set of beliefs about appropriate behavior, the organization's goals, and the ideas that the organization collectively views as important. Metaphors. Metaphors are words or phrases used within the organization to define something abstract in terms of something more familiar to members. Artifacts. Artifacts are tangible, physical features of the organization. Rituals. Rituals are traditional activities that highlight what the organization considers to be important. Stories. Stories are narratives that are told and retold 
to communicate cultural values, important events in the history of the organization, and the consequences of complying or deviating from cultural norms. Heroes. Heroes are members, past or present, who have been successful and made the company what it is today and who serve as role models to present and future members. Norms. Norms are the everyday ways of getting things done successfully within the organization. They also refer to what is acceptable and unacceptable behavior. And finally, communication. Communication refers to what people talk about, with whom, and how are very revealing aspects of organizational cultures. Organizing is a dynamic, increasingly challenging activity that requires goal setting, strategy, flexibility, adaptation by organizational members in order to be successful. The nature of an organization is both influenced by and highly influential on the nature of its communication. The structuration theory can help one better understand the relationship between organization and communication. Structuration theory suggests that the nature of organizing and organizational communication is constituted by the actions and interactions of members.